All right, today I'm going to show you Bespoke, a new modular synthesizer being released by my good friend, Ryan Chalinor. He's going to be releasing this soon. It's super fun, so I want to show it off. Uh, Bespoke is really weird, and that's why I like it. It is an open canvas for music exploration. We're looking at that canvas right now. And uh, so what you have essentially is a ton of different instruments, synthesizers, effects, modulators, don't know what these are, other <laughs> VST plugins, lots of things that you can add to this canvas and uh, connect them all together to make beautiful sounds. So we're just going to build something uh, kind of organically here. Uh, one thing I like is that, you know, there is this menu system, but you can also just type a letter and it will bring up all the things that start with that letter. So K, I know I want to play around with this instrument because it sounds beautiful. But N, we have a lot of things that start with note. So, uh, you know, if we want to use a note sequencer, which I actually do coincidentally, I can add that here. And you can see where the modular nature kind of comes in here. We have these different modules here that we can drag around on the canvas and connect them together. The brown sort of connectors here uh, indicate MIDI notes that are coming through, and then the blue and purple connectors here indicate audio. Did you expect that? There's a visualization for everything that you make here, both in the, the actual connections, but then also in the background, which has a nice sort of ambient uh, kind of music visualization going on for everything you do. Um, I'm pressing Shift P to start and stop the transport. That is not intuitive. Uh, Ryan is feverishly working on documentation and getting things polished and ready to go. Um, but I do suggest that you turn on tooltips because that will allow you to kind of check out the purpose of each of these modules if you just want to mess around. I don't know what Note Latch does, but if I look at the tooltip, I now know that I can use Note on messages to toggle notes on and off. Cool. Okay, so you can kind of imagine here you can create these crazy chains of um, MIDI kind of sequences where you are affecting the MIDI notes. So it's a really fun playground for uh, you know control data, MIDI data, uh, audio data, and then there's sort of a third category of data, which are these modulators in purple, which um, this is one of my favorites, the curve looper, which lets you modulate anything. So any of these parameters that we can look at, we can uh, modulate with the modulator. So if I want to change the volume of this, so I'm going to delete some of these modules. And we're going to choose a scale. Enigmatic sounds awesome. And C sharp, why not? I play saxophone and C sharp is a really tough scale, but with computers, not so tough anymore, is it? So we're going to draw in some random notes here, change some volume. There we go, we got some notes. So we can use the curve looper, like I said, to affect the. Let's see if I drag it in here. Make it a little bit more dynamic. So you can see how the curve looper is affecting the volume parameter right here. And there's also velocity info coming in from the note sequencer. So that's just an example of some of the fun stuff you can do. So um, I've found this, I, let's see, what I found really rewarding is kind of layering a few different uh, note sequencers on top of each other. Um, so I can set up a note sequencer here. You notice that I can zoom in and out, which is kind of nice. It gives you a little bit of focus because as you can imagine, <clears throat> as these patches kind of grow and grow, it can get a little unwieldy. So you'll definitely want to use the zoom to kind of um, get a sense of you know, the bearing. Uh, so let's see, if we want to do our en enigmatic scale and uh, just sort of mess around with some notes here, Sort of like some syncopation here. Oop. Okay, so 
that's one sequence, right? But kind of the nice thing about this is that you can layer in another note sequencer. Let's make it also 16 like. Drag it in there. Turn it up an octave. There's a few out-of-box instruments, uh, like the Cart Plus, which um, I think Ryan would have probably a better description of it, but I don't, you know, I'm familiar with like subtractive synthesis and FM synthesis and uh, sample-based synthesizers or wavetables. This is something else that I'm not familiar with. It's sort of feedback-based, so let's listen to it. effects there. You can hear the feedback, but I don't entirely understand how the synthesizer works. Um, you can also add audio effects, as you can imagine. So uh, a lot of that is done through uh, it's kind of a super module called Effect Chain. So if I press D, you'll see I can add a delay effect, but it's within an effect chain. And what that allows you to do is kind of within this module, you can add additional effects. So if I want delay and then distortion, I can do that. I can also um, change the, the ordering of the effects themselves. Um, let's see. So I am going to slide my effect chain into the signal path by holding shift. And that allows me to keep playing this. And I won't interrupt the sound. So notice how that just connected in and the audio comes in seamlessly. In fact, uh, the delay amount is set to zero, but I can turn that up. There's like a, um, there's a few different MIDI. I mean, there's a lot of MIDI effects, which is super fun. Um, there's Pocket, which is pretty cool. Okay, so let's go with this. This is kind of a fun sort of routine you can make. Um, so what I can do is I can say uh, that um, let's delete this chain right here and bring it into the pocket. And what does the tooltip say? It says sends notes to a random destination. So these are each individual outputs from pocket. And I can wait the chance that those outputs will receive uh, the MIDI input. So let's say, well, let's just do two outputs right now. So uh, I assume if the weight is both at 0.65, it's essentially a 50-50 chance. So I can send a 50-50 chance of going to this quarter and a 50-50 chance of going to this quarter. A quarter is exactly what it sounds like. It's going to turn a single note into a chord. I set diatonic so that it stays within the scale that we've set here, our enigmatic scale, the best of scales. And uh, I'm going to set up different chords on each of these. So it's going to be a 50-50 chance whether it goes to a chord that looks like this or a chord that looks like this. And we're going to bring it back into the card plus. And I can press play. So that's pretty fun. Um, so we could set up more quarters to create, you know, different, um, yeah, I don't know, just make it more interesting and weird. Uh, but why don't we explore some of the rhythm uh, synthesizers as well? So let's see. So one that's um, 
pretty straightforward and fun to work with is the drum synth. So it's an entirely synthesized drum set in that uh, each of these eight different uh, drum banks, you have access to a waveform and a noise form, for lack of a better word. And there's a sequencer that works a little bit better for drums called the drum sequencer. Uh, because it doesn't care as much about pitch, more about trigger. So here we have uh, our eight different um, instruments, and then you can you know kind of turn them on and off. So this is going to be a pretty basic kind of four in the floor kind of kick. Uh, let's do this. Let's turn off our car plus. Let's link in our drum. And what did I do? Okay, there we go. So uh, right now there's no audio because all of the uh, the volumes are set to zero here on our drum synth. So you can kind of see, I mean, that's the nice thing about Bespoke. It's all very visual, right? So we can see there's signal coming in and nothing's coming out. And we can see that there's some lines wiggling around over here. So all we have to do is turn up the, body, uh, the volume. And you have access to a few different parameters here. Freak max. I want max freakiness. I'm going to turn that down to make it a more of like a kick drum. Uh, you can drag around the envelopes here. So the release, well, in this case, it might be just decay. It's down there. And then we have a filter here that we can affect. So if we want to get rid of that clipping sound. So there you go. There's our kick drum. So this is kind of nice, right? And then you can kind of draw in some hi-hats. Here. Okay, so we get some. So here's a noise uh, generator right here, and a second one. Good enough. Good enough for a demo. Let's turn our car plus back on. So I haven't done too much with the modulators yet, and I feel like that's where um, you know, if I were to let that run, it could get a little boring, right? You just have this loop. It's, uh, you know, whatever, 16 uh, beats, and it would repeat over and over again. But with the modulators, you can affect any of these parameters here and add some variation and add some interest over time. Uh, so I think I mentioned before, I like the curve looper because it lets you kind of draw in the modulation that you want for a particular parameter. So let's do the filter parameter here oh, and let's make this kind of long right so we can have kind of interest over time so one way to do this would be to have just um, what am I doing just you can kind of like draw in your LFO essentially right and actually I should probably show the LFO capabilities So that, using this is actually uh, <laughs> more intuitive to me than what I'm about to show, but um, there's a lot of power in the LFO capabilities that he built in because any of these parameters, you can right click and instantly link in an LFO. So um, where's a good opportunity to do that? Maybe in the, I'm already kind of messing with that. I don't know. I mean, I don't have too much going on here. So. Uh, 
let's do the um, delay mag. I don't know. That'll be fun. Okay, so if I right click, you can see it kind of creates this new module. It's an LFO module. You can pin it so it just kind of is easier to see. And if we press play, it's not doing anything, but we can set a low and a high. And you can see the visualization of the LFO right there. You get tons of different options here, which is great because I feel like in other LFO tools that I've used in other programs, you kind of end up with the same LFO, the same sort of sign, you know, LFO every single time. But here you can do stuff that I really like to do, which is set up like kind of a really long LFO, but then have like a spike. You know, I feel like that's more interesting than having a very periodic LFO that just kind of repeats every measure. So, oh, yeah. oh, that's, that's awesome. All right, well, I think that's enough for kind of an intro. To bespoke, hopefully you can see the potential here. Lots of opportunities for crazy melodies, loops, modulation, everything. Um, did I mention you can drag in VSTs? So any VSTs that you've fallen in love with, you can bring right in. Uh, I'm going to drag in Valhalla because it's the only reverb VST you'll ever need for our outro here. I usually like to do something along these lines. <laughs>